So uh, I have a lot to speak about in my uh, time allotment, and uh, hopefully I'll uh, get through it in, uh, in an orderly fashion. Uh, briefly, what I'm going to do is introduce the topic, and thank you for muting the cell phone. There'll be uh, plenty of uh, noises presented later on in, the, uh, in uh, Casey's presentation. So uh, I first want to introduce uh, the purpose and the desired outcomes of this event. Go to the uh, on-demand on mobility. Uh, I just introduced that topic because it's, it means different things to different people. Uh, get into the history a bit, and that goes from the early days all the way up to the present uh, stage with the spiral development, which will be the topic of Mark's and then presentation, and then talk about the agenda. Uh, so the uh, purpose of this uh, forum is to address both the opportunities and challenges. I, I wanted to do that uh, so that we really get it all out in the open. Uh, there is no uh, benefit uh, to uh, this uh, technology without a cost, and this forum is all about discussing that and figuring out what that is. So it will be uh, applied to uh, distributed electric propulsion, of course, uh, for the range of vehicles from UAVs to GA to regional transports. And uh, what I hope to uh, get out of this is uh, a conversation or start a conversation amongst the members of the NASA technical community, both here at Langley and uh, at the other field centers, uh, particularly a conversation between the people that are working the project, and, or various projects, actually, and those that are not, and in the process, hopefully, generate some ideas leading to uh, some practical solutions. So what is on-demand mobility? Um, it's a, a societal capability uh, more than it is a uh, technology. Uh, one goal of uh, on-demand mobility is to achieve uh, higher door-to-door -door, uh, uh, average trip speeds than is possible today. So, for example, let's see if I can get my mouse over there. Yay. Uh, we all live in this area, of course. Uh, just think about what we could do if uh, we could extend our uh, daily range from this uh, small area called Hampton Roads all the way throughout Virginia and, and the better part of North Carolina. That has a tremendous impact. Uh, regionally, in terms of the ground transportation and every, everybody knows 64, uh, what that's like. Geographic constraints are removed and the infrastructure necessary to overcome them, bridges, tunnels, etc. Scarce resource constraints are removed. And then finally, uh, combined with telecommuting, it really opens up other areas of, uh, of uh, the place that we call Earth. So on-demand mobility solutions do exist, but they have limitations. Those include GA aircraft for transporting people and uh, to a lesser extent or just coming out now is uh, the idea of UAVs for uh, package delivery. So what's in common is that they have poor aerodynamic and propulsive efficiencies, poor community noise, comparative safety, emissions, control, high operating costs, and it takes a significant amount of training. <coughs> Excuse me. So autonomy which was the subject of a previous CDF, and we'll discuss and will be discussed briefly here, as well as distributed electric propulsion, again, which is the topic of this conversation, has the potential to dramatically improve uh, all the uh, gap areas identified. So I'll talk about the history now, uh, the early days, which I, I had to laugh at because it's only five years ago. Uh, this stuff is moving very rapidly and, and is getting a lot of steam. Uh, we investigated advanced propose, uh, personal mobility concepts and their impact on the infrastructure. And these included some radical concepts, such as shown here, that are very disruptive to the uh, air transportation system. Um, what can be said about this is that after a, a five-year period, there's a lot of renewed interest in uh, PAVs now, and that's part of the uh, spiral development approach that Mark will be talking about in some, in some detail. Around the same time, and extending for a period of a couple of years, were system studies uh, that were supported by the ARMD strategy uh -huh. office, that's Bob Pierce's office, which investigated a number of concepts, including zip aviation. And these utilize advanced uh, technology, small aircraft, to uh, provide high-speed regional mobility. An outcome of that work was that autonomy and electric uh, propulsion were identified as critical technologies. Subsequent to that, but during the, around the same period, uh, DEP was identified as uh, the best way to integrate the technologies for the impact on the aircraft configuration. 
and specifically the idea of a direct drop and replacement of, say, an internal uh, combustion propulsor, turbofan, or, or a uh, gas um, engine, internal combustion engine for a prop with an electric propulsor was not the way to go. And similar conclusions were arrived uh, at independently by uh, Rolls-Royce and some IRAD studies uh, recently conducted. So it's not just NASA, but everybody's uh, thinking along the same lines. So what does depth do for us? It opens up a lot of degrees of freedom to the disciplines that we all work. Uh, Aeropropulsive, uh, high lift, small wing, which equates to a higher wing loading, giving a smoother ride and higher aerodynamic efficiency. Aeroacoustics, we can tailor the, the sound, as you'll hear, and hopefully in the process uh, minimize the community noise impact. Flight controls, reliability, robustness, redundancy, and, uh, and that's achieved through this uh, distributed thrust to create the control forces and moments. And then finally, autonomy, which is not fundamentally enabled by DEP, but is convergent with DEP's digital control systems. So the early work was focused primarily on the aeropropulsive element, and going forward, it was recognized we really need to do this in more of a multidisciplinary fashion. And that's where the next phase comes into play, the spiral development, where we're getting more people uh, involved in the various stages. Starting in 2011 and working to the present day, the uh, unmanned demonstrators, uh, the, the, the effort was directed at unmanned demonstrators, including here the uh, Joby uh, Lotus on the uh, upper right, which has got wingtip rotors uh, for, and a tail rotor for vertical lift. The wingtip rotors fall during uh, forward flight and the tail rotor uh, rotates down to uh, give the propulsive element. I won't get into detail uh, on the next one because it'll be discussed uh, in greater detail, but this is the GL-10 uh, tilt wing. Uh, shown on the lower left is a uh, wind tunnel experiment that was conducted in order to uh, generate an aero database uh, for the control system development. So that's kind of a smaller scale. Now going to a somewhat larger scale is the uh, demonstrator known as HEIST. This is the hybrid electric integrated system test bed. Uh, shown here, let me see if I can get my mouse again. We have a, uh, a tractor trailer test rig that's been modified to accommodate this uh, depth wing on the top. That wing is 30 foot, uh, 31 foot wingspan with 18 motors and propellers. And the, the objective here is to validate the high lift uh, performance of this configuration. It'll be operated at about 300 horsepower, which is needed for the 61, the critical 61 knot stall speed uh, certification requirement. Uh, this will be run at uh, Armstrong uh, in January of uh, next year. So it's, uh, it's coming up, and I know that there's a lot of people involved uh, at various centers in this, including Langley. Now, the big thing uh, that's coming up is the uh, CAS project, which uh, uh, J1 initially uh, uh, indicated uh, in just recent days as being one of the two projects going into the execution phase. This uh, project uh, uses a, a leap tech uh, or leading edge asynchronous propulse, propeller technology wing to, uh, and let me do a click on this and we'll see how that goes hopefully. There we go, voila. Um, it's a retrofit of that wing uh, on this Technum 2006 uh, uh, twin engine aircraft, so while well, I said a retrofit was not the way to go, we're not just putting those, taking those engines out and putting a, a, an electric engine in its place, but, a, uh, but rather replacing the whole wing. This gives us the advantage of a low cost flight demonstrator, which has a, uh, through which the data that we acquire then will uh, allow us to do a direct comparison with the baseline. And uh, from uh, uh, the, the significant part of this effort is uh, on the aeroelastic design portion, a lot of which will be done here at Langley, as I understand. So going forward in this uh, agenda, we have uh, four presentations. Uh, Mark will be speaking about uh, UAVs and the spiral development all the way up to the regional transports. Uh, Nick then on the analysis design certification challenges. Casey will speak about the perception influenced acoustic design, what that's all about. Um, and then finally, uh, Irene will speak about reliability, robustness, and redundancy in the flight control systems uh, for, for these uh, aircraft. 
We'll have a brief gap as a break, as uh, Jonathan indicated, and then we'll follow up with the group discussion. Now, you might ask yourself in the closing seconds of my presentation, well, what's missing here? And that is uh, a lot of things. We only have so much time, so we can't discuss everything under the sun. But those things that we do know that are missing uh, are uh, energy storage, for example, range extenders, materials and structures, how can we more efficiently integrate the uh, battery technology, for example, with the, uh, with the vehicle structure itself, not getting too much into the aeroelastic design aspect. And then there's the environmental impact. What does this say about uh, atmospheric uh, 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 emissions and so forth? So we won't get into that, but there's enough knowledgeable people uh, both on the panel and hopefully in the audience that we can certainly entertain that during the course of the discussion. Thank you.